Hi, thanks for coming back to my channel. I'm your Everyday Joe. Today, we're going to be talking about this Power Air Fry Oven. This is my one-year review of this Power Air Fry Oven. I've been using it now just over a year. Uh, so we're going to be talking about some of the things I liked, some of the things I didn't like, and uh, what to look for. So I'll see you on the other side. We appreciate you watching this video. If you want to show support to this channel, be sure to click the subscribe button. And to stay up to date on new content, when we release it, ring the notification bell. You can also visit us on our website or look for us on social networks. Now let's get into the video. Okay, so one of the first things I do like about this unit is it is compact. It takes up about 14 inches uh, by 13 by 15 in height on a countertop or uh, on a table. So it doesn't take up a whole lot of space, about the same amount of space as a, uh, a stand mixer or a big blender. So uh, I, did, I did like the fact that it didn't take up a whole lot of, lot of space on my countertops. Another thing I liked about this oven is it's, uh, it's pretty versatile when we're using it for different types of cooking. I've used it now for you know, baking, for uh, meat cooking, for appetizers, uh, for light air frying. So it, it does work. And the cooking times were reduced by about 40% and the temperature reduced by about 20% of the uh, recipe requirements. So that is a nice, nice little feature to have uh, in these units. Except for the making of the pizza, which I'll get into in, uh, in a later segment in this video. So make sure you watch that segment. The next feature I do like about it is the cleaning. The cleaning on this thing is relatively easy. Uh, the door that comes off comes off pretty quickly, pretty easy. So you can wipe the inside glass and the outside gets cleaned pretty easily. Uh, also in here, the plastic is easy to clean. Just a little soap and water, maybe a sponge, and be able to clean that up pretty quickly. Except for where the railings are, you have to get in there a little tighter uh, with, uh, with a sponge or uh, a rag. But overall, cleaning it is, is really, really easy. Although, of one of the caveats that I do have about cleaning is this glass here. If you get some uh, residue or some oil uh, spraying on the inside of these holes here, on the, on the bottom and on the top, it does tend to run on the inside of that glass. I ran into that probably within the first month or so uh, while I was doing a rotisserie chicken. You can check out that video uh, in the playlist. So uh, what I had to do, it, it wasn't pleasant, it's not recommended, uh, is I had to take off all these screws here and separate the casing to be able to slide the glass out and clean the inside of it. I don't recommend doing that only because this is a plastic shell and you might strip out the screws and then basically be useless. Uh, so that, that's one of, one of the big caveats of cleaning uh, if you do run into that. But one of the best features of these uh, air fryers is that you don't need a whole lot of oil or very little oil. So uh, overall, you do need some uh, some oil. I use a oil mister or sprayer, some uh, cooking spray to put over, especially the drier uh, foods. If you're going to be coating them in flour or uh, breadcrumbs, give it, give it a little spray. It'll definitely crisp it up for you, give you a nice texture, and also a good way to add flavor to it. Uh, but overall, you're not going to be doing any frying or you're going to be saving some uh, some serious calories using these air fryer ovens. The next feature I do like is the dehydrator feature of this oven. Now I, I know that most of the air fryers don't have that, but this does. It has a controller feature here. Uh, the temperature ranges from 90 to about 175, which covers just about all your dehydration uh, requirements on this. The, uh, the timer feature on this is also up to 24 hours. So uh, you can pretty much dehydrate, you know, uh, most of your foods with that temperature setting and that time frame. So the dehydration uh, is fantastic here. Just make sure that you're uh, rotating the racks uh, at certain intervals of your required dehydration times. The rotisserie feature on this is fantastic. A lot of these air fryers don't come with a rotisserie feature. The Power Air Fry Oven does have one. Uh, and it does come in handy. I've been able to do uh, a little over a five pound chicken in this unit. Uh, I've also done pork roast and roast beef. Also the shish kebab rack setting, also another nice feature 
uh, once you get past the assembly and how to clip the skewers in there and uh, about how, how large to make the pieces. Once you get past that small learning curve, the feature is fantastic. The rotisserie is great. I love using that. So that, that is definitely another plus for this unit. Okay, so now let's talk about some of the things I didn't like about it. Uh, the first thing we'll, we'll talk about is the wire racks. Now, overall, these racks are not bad. Uh, they are made a little flimsy. You can see there's a little you know, wave into them. After using them for you know, a couple of months, uh, use them at least once a week, sometimes twice a week, they tend to bow a little bit. I don't know if you can see that, but you've got kind of a wave uh, into them. So you, know, you may have to rotate them the opposite direction. Again, you know, aren't the best quality made. And while we're on the subject of these racks, let's, uh, let's talk about the inside here, how they go in there. Uh, and the way these go in here, there's probably a two inch railing that it slides in. And I'll, I'll show a picture somewhere over here. Uh, you'll see the, the, the railing is only about two inches on each side. So as you're sliding them in, you've got to get it perfectly within that slot and it doesn't go all the way to the end. Now they have corrected that in the Power Air Fryer Elite version. Uh, the door opens up on the outside and the railing goes in all the way through. Also the racks on those are made a little bit more sturdy. They, they dip in a little bit like a tray and uh, the outside wiring is much, much uh, stiffer, a little thicker gauge. So they have obviously corrected that in the newer version, but for this version that's probably one of the worst features that that it has and it's a real pain in the neck to be able to get the racks in and out especially when they're hot and you're rotating racks uh, from top to bottom so again not not one of my favorite features it's probably the the worst feature of this unit uh, now I've already talked about the the glass cleaning uh, that is uh, also another another problem with this so far I've only had to do that once I haven't had to revisit that again uh, once in a year you know I, I suppose it's uh, it's pretty good. It might have been a fluke, but the rack is something that's not going to go away. Well, while we're on the category of useless uh, features, uh, let's talk about this wire basket here, which looks fantastic. You think you would want to use it for something uh, other than roasting peanuts. Uh, it does have a nice opening here. The door the problem with this is it does get hot around the edges. If you're reaching in, you're probably going to burn your, your hands or your, your fingers. I've tried making french fries in here, tried making onion rings in here. It really, uh, it doesn't give you the crispiness that, uh, that it would if you just place them on a regular rack. And that might be because it's uh, the wire shielding here. It's, it's kind of shielding all the, the heat uh, get on the food. And because it rotates so slowly, they're just steaming. And I really haven't had much of a use for anything other than roasting peanuts in this. Uh, I just find it useless. If you guys have used the basket for something other than I've mentioned and have made, had success in it, put it down in the comments section down below and you know I'll give it a shot. Maybe uh, maybe you can shed some light on you know why they created this thing and why it doesn't work so well. We've talked about pretty much everything to do with the uh, manufacturing of this unit. Now let's talk about on what it doesn't cook well. One of the first things I tried was pizza. Now they say that it does cook pizza and it does cook dough, but I've seen the, uh, the dough, all it does is it dries up the top because the heat is coming from the top and blowing down. So it's just blowing hot air over the dough, uh, making it uh, crispy on the outside or dry crisp on the outside. And the bottom is, is raw. The inside really doesn't cook it all that much uh, before it starts burning. And I'm, I'm specifically talking about fresh dough, homemade dough. Uh, if you're getting a, a frozen pizza crust that's par cooked, that probably will work fine. They do recommend that you cook the dough separately and flip it over, cook it a little bit longer, and then add your toppings. I, I just, that's not how I make pizza. I make it fresh and I want it to, to cook evenly, cook the bottom, cook the top at the same time. I don't want to have to, you know, revisit pizza, you know, every, you know, every few minutes to, to do something else to it. Pizza is one of the easiest things to make and they really didn't give that one much thought. The other problem cooking pizza in this unit is it only goes up to 400 degrees. I normally cook pizza in a conventional oven at about 500, 550 sometimes just to make it hot enough. And if you go to any of the uh, fancy pizza places with the wood burning ovens or anything, uh, anything like that, they'll get that thing up to 1000 degrees and it cooks the pizza perfectly within a few minutes. 
So this definitely is not, I don't recommend this for homemade pizzas or homemade doughs at this point. I just haven't had any success making it work well. It just, it comes up more like a cracker than a pizza dough. So, uh, so I hope that helps on the pizza side. So overall, I do recommend this unit. I do like it. I will continue to use it. Uh, outside of the little nuances about it, I'm sure I can work around it. I'm sure you guys can too. Uh, if they are a sticking point, obviously move on to the, the Elite version, which corrects a lot of the issues I'm talking about here. If I was to give this a grade of 1 to 10, 10 being the highest, I'd give it a 7.5. And again, it was the door, the railings, you know, the temperature. Uh, you know, so it's uh, overall... It cooks everything and you guys can check out some of my other food videos to see what I've cooked in it. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed so you can see what else I continue to cook in it until this unit fails. If you have anything to share, go ahead and uh, add it to the comment section. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up and share it and I'll see you in the next video.